In today's video, we're going to be doing a DIY project broken down into two to three videos. And what we're going to be doing is a Fat Shark module dock. Now we're going to call it Elite Dock V1. And let's explain what this thing actually does. Well, it's going to be a PCB board. As you can tell, that's the 3D version of it, but without everything on it. And this will allow you to plug in any Fat Shark module, whether it be 2.4 gigahertz, 1.2 gigahertz, or even the 5.8 gigahertz, such as these, or anyone, even the rapid fire included. So you'll be able to put any Fat Shark module onto this thing, and it'll pipe out the video uh, via auxiliary connector, just like this here. However, that is not its only function. I've also was able to add a couple more things. So this thing will actually take two 18650 batteries. It also has charging capabilities via micro USB. And I even added a big full fledged type A USB connector so you can charge phones basically because we're st we still have five volts inside. So why not we utilize it because we have a ton of space here. And uh, that's what we did. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is the best place to have your PCB manufactured, prototyped, and or have your final product complete with their flashing services as well as their assembly services. And they have 24 hour express service, which I use constantly and you should definitely check them out. So right now, I believe it's kind of hard for you to imagine, but let's actually take a look at the components that are going to be connected on this. Now, I've done it very modular and very easy, and I really don't need to reinvent the wheel. So I've gotten a bunch of modules which are super freaking cheap. For example, we're going to be using this 18650 battery connector, uh, which is going to go on the bottom side of the PCB. So if we take a look here, we can see the mounting holes already in place, but we really don't care about those. We're just going to solder those into place right there and they'll hold. It'll be on this side. It'll be on the back side right here. You can see the outline of the uh, PCB or of the battery holder right there. And here you get three pieces for three dollars. So a buck a piece. So you'll be actually be able to build more than one. Now, what's really nice about this is that you can either choose to use one or two batteries. It's up to you. So if you just have one 18650 laying around, stick that thing in there. And there's also, again, charging capability. So this could even be a charger, but it charges maximum of one amp. So it's kind of a slow charger, but it gets the job done. And it, again, this can also be a power bank as well, uh, the whole project here. The next thing we're going to need is some sort of a step up regulator or a step up module. What this will do since a full lithium ion battery is 4.2 volts. Well, fast shock modules and also if we wanted to charge our phone uh, need five volts. So this thing right here um, is two dollars and 30 cents basically. And we want the five volt variant. I'll have everything linked down below. This will step up, you know, whatever it is, the low voltage of 3.7 to 4.2, which is full voltage of a battery or a full charge to 5 volt stable. So it'll boost that voltage and keep it at a stable 5 volts. And that's what we need in order to run these. Next thing, uh, we have the lithium ion. It's a charging and protection module, basically. So this will allow you to charge your lithium ions that are, that are connected in the back and also add protection. So that's really great. So under voltage protection, so uh, it'll disconnect the battery when uh, when the battery is basically drained out. So you don't under discharge and you don't over discharge. So it's really nice because it adds this little feature. Now, if you take a closer look here, actually, I forgot to show you this little module right here will actually just be installed right there, right below the fat shock module. And there's going to be enough clearance because it's going to be female headers where this actually just plugs in just like that. I mean, everything's inverted on the camera right now. But it'll just plug in like that. It'll be really nice. Um, so yeah, that goes there. The boosting circuit will go here. Right here, as you can tell, you kind of have the the uh, outline of that charging module, which will be soldered into place right here. You could just install wires. I'll show you how to do that once we get it into place. Micro USB will be here to charge the backside where the batteries are going to be connected. And here are some switches so you can turn it on and off instead of you removing the battery, uh, which I think is going to be a lot better. So here, 60 for $2. I couldn't find one. So this is the best I found. Uh, 60 of them for $2. They always come in handy. There's a lot of stuff that you could buy that has these cheap little switches. And the switch will be connected right here, which you could turn on and off. Next, we're going to need a PJ320A jack. Now, this is very important. You get this one. Uh, because there's so many out there and this is the one that has the correct pin out. So this is the one that has the correct pins that we're going to need in order to output the video in kind of a standard format, kind of like the Raspberry Pi in a way. It's using 3.5 millimeter um, wire here that's going to be connected. And you'll have also audio being outputted left and right, depending on the module. If it's outputting both or one, it'll also be routed. Uh, we'll get into the specs in the later video. Um, so this, this right here is going to be connected 
right there. As you can tell, that's where the uh, auxiliary is going to be installed. And you don't have to set this one up. It's a female type A. Uh, you get 10 of them for $1.50 on, I'll have everything again linked down below on eBay. And um, the only reason I added this is because we still have five volts and you know, why not use it to charge something? You're not gonna be able to charge super fast. I mean, the maximum output is possibly like one amp-ish uh, with the boosting circuit that we're using. But it's good for something. I mean, you, you know, well, you know, just has a little extra space. So I thought we'd put there. You don't have to install that if you don't want that. Um, you could just get away without using it. Later on, if you want to install it, you can install it and have some sort of a USB 5 volt output. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't need programming. It doesn't need anything. So um, that's the project. I mean, it, it's going to be really interesting here. Now, if we take a closer look at the PCB design, um, which I'm not going to cover into too much detail here. I'm just gonna explain to you the theory right now. So these, imagine these are the female headers where the Fat Shark module are going to be connected. Now every Fat Shark module has a couple pins. These are standard pin orders. So this one right here, which will be the bottom one, is usually VCC, which is five volts. The next one is not connected. This would be ground. Then we have video and then audio left and audio right, or they're both the same audio. Basically, we, all, we usually have just one audio. They could all both output the same thing or just one thing. Uh, so these are the audio and this is the video. Now, if you take a closer look here, let's, let's actually follow the five volts. So what happens is the battery will get connected. This is the positive, I think, and this is the negative. I kind of forgot, yeah. So this is the positive and this is the negative, but we're not getting the, the power from the batteries. We're actually getting them from this module because the battery goes into that module, that TP4056. So we have the, you know, the uh, under discharge or over discharge protection and short circuit protection or everything of that nature. And they're being outputted here. So this is where our main output is coming. So what we see here is we have our output going, which is the positive. And it's going to a switch. So once we switch the switch to the left side or right side right now for me, um, then it'll apply power to the step up. The step up will convert that 4.2 volts to 5 volts and then feed it directly to what? To the Fast Shark modules 5 volt or the VCC. And we're also feeding it to the VCC on the USB port uh, so we could have 5 volt going there again just for charging purposes. Next, you have ground. Ground is going to be connected all over the board. It's a copper plane. That's why you don't see it connected. Uh, let me actually show you an example here. And again, I want to see if this picks up attraction and interest, then I'll go into even more detail and show you how I actually did this. So if we take a closer look at the ground, sorry, this was the ground. You see that it's open. This right here, it's isolated. This, this pretends like the red is all copper. And this see-through part is the part that's um, isolated. It's basically cut off. So there's no uh, connection. But here you see the ground, it's kind of open. So this whole pin is actually connected to the whole board. And that's what you see, uh, that's why ESCs, when you, when you go and solder, or form one ESCs to be exact, when you go and solder the ground, it always takes so long. It's because it has to heat up this whole board. And that's what usually happens. It's called the ground plane. Or the, yeah, the ground plane, that's what I call it. Um, so that's what's really going on there. So I'm just gonna remove this here. Uh, so the Fat Shark module again, here's the ground, here's the 5 volt, and this is the video. Now if we follow the video, what we see, we see it going, 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 and it's going to this part of the connector because it's going to be outputted on this guy right here. And um, I mean, it's really that simple. There's nothing else I got to say to here. Very simple design, very efficient. It should be very stable because there's nothing. We might have to add some capacitors here and there, I think, depending on this boosting circuit. Sometimes they introduce a little flickering or you know, just like a little noise, and that can translate into the video feed that's coming down. But I think this will be good. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm let's just say 70% sure. It's not gonna, even if it wasn't good, it's not gonna be bad. It's just gonna be some annoying lines. Stick a cap in there, you're good to go. But like this, I think we should have a pretty stable output here. Um, and it was a little fun, nice project that was sponsored by PCBWay. Thank you, PCBWay. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I'd be, I wouldn't be able to do all this stuff. Uh, this is just really awesome. So I've always wanted to do my own, you know, Fat Shark module dock in a way. And it's really nice for testing and prototyping. And even if you have a channel or you have a couple modules you want to test, you can actually just stick them together and just output them somewhere. So it's also really nice to know that perspective. It's very cheap to make. Uh, I think everything I calculated without the PCBs was 13 bucks, but you could make way more than one with everything you're buying. So at the end of the day, probably each one would cost you like $2. And maybe you could sell them for your, to your friends for like seven or 10 bucks or something. It's all open source. You guys can do whatever you want. I have, a, you know, you, you're free to sell, do use it as commercial use, whatever you want. However, 
currently my schematics and the design everything's available to my patreon so with one click my patron actually have access to all of these files and they could modify them to whatever they want they have complete just one they click one link this opens right up not only that my patrons also get secret shop access and a ton of premium giveaways and i also do something else which i forgot but i do a lot of things on patreon for patreon so come join my patreon oh and new patreons if you become my patreon you guys always have a dedicated uh giveaway just for you as well so if we have five new patreons this month these five will have a premium giveaway or two so yeah that's just you know just telling you about my patreon so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section i will be ordering these right now they'll be here in about maybe four days or so from pcb way um also once i test it or in the second video or the third video depending if you guys want me to go into more detail explaining this um and how i came up with this idea uh let me know down in the comment section because if it doesn't get enough interest then i'm just gonna make one more video which would be the final video when we put it together but if it does get enough interest then i go into even more detail on this and really help you understand what's really going on and why i chose the things i chose here and it should be a very easy build for everybody. That was the whole idea. Everything is through hole. That means, you know, with pins on the other side, solder, done. So I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Yet as, um, you know, I, re I really want to introduce you guys to this stuff, especially if you don't know. Maybe you have a little small idea, which you could easily pump out in like two seconds. And um, yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in that. And let me know what you guys think of the whole idea here. I mean, it's just a really basic design. I'm sure... Um, you can do anything you want with this if you want to add some more stuff to it. And, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.